Hey, Kevin here, top one to financial advisor and best-selling author, and we are here to talk about the stock market. Today, I want to talk about ETFs, what they are, how they can help you, and why I think they're a little underutilized in the investing space. So, an ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. It is basically a package of stocks put together to make things a lot easier for you, and it really can help you in the decision-making process. Because most people that I run into, and I'm, you know, I try to teach people about the stock market every day, so I get a lot of questions, and a lot of questions circle around. Well, should I pick? I don't know, Coinbase or Robinhood? Should I pick PayPal or Block? Should I pick JP Morgan or Ally or Goldman Sachs? And you've got, that's five different choices, right? Which one of these companies should I buy? Well, this can easily be solved with a FinTech or a finance ETF where it has all of these things packaged together for one price in one place and I don't have to pick and choose. It also helps me to diversify and lower my risk because let's say if I'm only investing $100 and that's it, and I can only put it in one thing, then I can risk it all and put it on Coinbase, risk it all and put it in JP Morgan. If it doesn't work, that's it, that's my $100. As opposed to saying, okay, well, I'll get this one ETF and it will invest in all those things. So if Coinbase doesn't do what I need it to do after the Super Bowl commercial, or SoFi doesn't do what I want it to do after the Super Bowl itself, then I still have money in JP Morgan, I still have money in Goldman Sachs, Ally, perhaps those stocks will even things out inside of that ETF. So that would be like a finance ETF or fintech ETF. In fact, we actually did uh, uh, an, ep an episode, I guess it's an episode now, but a video on banking. We did it, banking ETFs, which ones I liked, which ones I didn't like. Feel free to go back and check that one if you are into that. But it's something we don't always think about. I think for investors, outside of index funds, which I'll, I'll touch on in just a second, but we go for, we just go straight into stocks and we, I love stocks. We talk about them all the time, right? Five days a week, every single week, nearly without fail, right? 200 and, what, 250 videos a year? Something, some, some ridiculous number of videos we do every single year. But a lot of that's focused on the stock market. I like talking about stocks. But again, you don't always have to jump all the way to stocks. You can say, look, I'll stick in the middle. I'll get an exchange traded fund. If, you know, if we think inflation is going to impact the market, if we think interest rates are going to impact the market, and we think that banking is going to be the place, you don't have to kind of pick through and hope that, in my case, a Capital One is the right answer. Or, a, like I said, JP Morgan or Bank of America or, or Morgan Stanley is the right answer. You can say, look, I'll just get this bank ETF and call it a day. I'm on them all anyway, but if, if banking is the correct answer, I'm going to win because I have this ETF. Remember, we had talked about PAVE. The ticker symbol is P-A-V-E. That was for the infrastructure ETF. I don't know, I don't have to know which one of these um, companies are going to, is going to benefit the most. I own a good chunk of them because I own PAVE, right? And that's just an example. But that is the beauty of ETFs. The other part of it that I, I don't think enough people understand or don't think about is remember, there are two sides of the spectrum when it comes to investors, for, for the most part. You got one side that says, I'm a buy and hold investor, and I buy it, I hold it, I don't touch it in between. I just, I leave it alone, which, you know, I'm kind of in that space most times, right? Because I buy and I hold for six months, I reevaluate and then continue to hold, which could be forever. Yeah, Microsoft, Apple, Google, those are forever companies. They're, they're, I'm probably never selling those. So I'm a long-term investor in that sense, right? But then you have the other side where they are swing traders. I'll just put this as trading in general, but swing traders and day traders where things get a little harder, right? And they say, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to hold it for, I don't know, two weeks. I'll buy this and hold this and I'll, hold, I'll, I'll buy it, I'll hold it for, I don't know, a day. And I make my profit and I move on to the next thing. Well, exchange traded funds also have that capability. When we say exchange traded, it means it is traded on an exchange like the New York Stock Exchange, which is where we get most of our stocks or a good chunk of them rather. And it moves throughout the day just like a stock would. So if you are, you know, paying attention to the stock market when you're at work, which is what I do, <laughs> but when you're when you're doing that, you can look at your phone and say, oh look, price up, price down, whatever, what have you, right? I probably shouldn't be reacting to all those prices. You don't want to do that. But an index or an exchange traded fund can do that 
for you. So if you're trying to be more active, but you don't want to pick a specific stock, you can still trade an exchange traded fund. You can still trade an ETF, which is the beauty of it. Because again, let's say I'm, I'm trying to do a swing trade. I want some money now, right? I want to, you know, give me a decent profit, buy me some tacos, give me a decent profit and, and I don't know, buy something to put on these shelves or something like that, right? Well, maybe I'll go trade. But instead of picking one company, maybe I'll just get an ETF. I think bank is going to do good. I think energy might do well. Maybe I'll go and look for one of those ETFs and do it that way. So I don't have to be hyper-focused and be wrong about something that kind of lessens the risk for me. So that's the beauty of an ETF. Now, a question I know you're going to uh, ask because I just nearly messed up as I was speaking to you about this. An index fund is a type of ETF. Okay, I think a lot of people, we've gotten so open about index funds. We've talked about them so much. A lot of times we think that it goes into its own category when technically an index fund is a flavor of an ETF. Okay, so for example, ticker symbol VOO, that is an ETF, but the flavor of that ETF is the S&P 500, which means that it invests in the index, the S&P 500. An index, for those that don't know, it's like a report card or, you know, I would say a report card, even a roster of the, the top 500 companies. So that is called the index. When we say the market, we're talking about the usually the S&P 500. What ETF comprises of that? VOO is one of those, right? So VOO is an index ETF, okay? They're, they're one and the same, right? It's an index ETF. Another ETF out there, PAVE, P-A-V-E, not an index, right? It's just infrastructure companies. Another um, ETF, VUG, I'm just really just thinking of ones that come off the top of my head. That is the Vanguard Growth Companies. Not an index, but it is an ETF and it has, excuse me, as what Vanguard considers are the best growth companies. And you can trade e any or all of those. I'm actually, for, for me, I'm going to look into VUG, VUG, VUG. VUG, however you want to pronounce that, um, but take or symbol there again. It's VUG, and it's, you know maybe it's one I want to trade. The thing is, I get the ability to, right? As opposed to saying I just think this one company is going to do well. Or for example, Nvidia. I was going to trade for that, made some money. I happen to have gotten out just based on the the price that it, it got me out at the uh, the limit order. Um, their earnings are tomorrow. It might go well. I hope it goes well. If it doesn't. I got my money. I'm out. But if I'm trading something like VUG, I don't have to worry about that. That's that's one of the advantages because if you are if you've done trading before, one of the disadvantages is you may not know when these random events may occur. Or they're not really random. But for example, earnings can really hurt one stock. It can only hurt one stock at a time. So for example, we saw what was it, Netflix, they announced earnings crash 20 25 percent a firm had a weird thing where they announced earnings early and the stock absolutely crashed like 20 25 percent for whatever reason when stock crash is always 20 percent at least this year right well what if i had an etf instead if i had a banking etf that one stock crashes it might not matter because i got 40 45 50 other stocks and I'm unfazed. That is one of the advantages if you're looking to trade and be more active in one ETF. Maybe it's VUG, maybe it's PAVE, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's JMOM, which is J-M-O-M, which is funny, cool ticker. Um, that is the JP Morgan, JP Morgan Momentum Fund. It's trying to find stocks that do better than the overall stock market. When I checked, it was only up 4% over the past year, so not that impressive, honestly. But it's out there. But again, don't don't forget about ETFs. They are a really good value add to your game, to your portfolio. That if you don't already own an index fund, which you know, index ETF, they, those exist. Those do count. Um, if you don't already own those, you might want to consider looking into those ETFs. If you're not somebody that says, "Look, you know, I really, I don't know which stock is right for me." maybe an ETF is for you that encompasses the area that you believe in or the area of the market that you think is going to do well. Like another space I have my eye on, I haven't gotten enough chance, gotten enough time to do research on it, is healthcare. We talked about how healthcare is one of the spaces that should do well with rising interest rates. Well, instead of saying United Healthcare or CVS that kind of fits in that spot, 
What if I just do a healthcare ETF? Have that plus more. That's that's a, a spot, right? You can absolutely do that. If there is if there's anything you are interested in in the market, there is a 90% chance there's an ETF out there for you. You want a diversity ETF, or they believe, or it's companies that believe in diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's out there. You want um, an ETF that believes in the metaverse, it is definitely out there. It's all out there for you. It makes investing a little bit easier and a little less cumbersome and a little less volatile in the sense that oh, it's earnings date or this this one geopolitical event happened. It can kind of even things out a bit, protect you just a little bit. But again, there's always a risk versus reward there. So sometimes you can get an ETF that does well, right? But then if you invested in one stock or one stock out of the ETF, you could have done even better. So always, you know, balance that. Last thing I'll tell you is this. Now, ETFs are created the same. And there are some years where ETFs are and ETF does quite well, and then it doesn't. ARK, the ARK Innovation Fund, ticker symbol ARKK, was a very, uh, hot, I wouldn't say a hot button issue, but it was something that did really, really well. It was headed by Kathy Wood, did extremely well during the pandemic. It had, you know, had Tesla in it, and had, at one point it had Coinbase, once Coinbase went public, but it did really well. And then the next year, hadn't done that well at all. So. Just because it worked in one one period, depending on the type of ETF that's out there, you know, sometimes it does well, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so that is it for me. Make sure that you get my book, Burning From Burning to Blueprint, Rebuilding Black Wall Street After Century of Silence. It's right here. It's also on, I was going to say it's on Instagram. It is on Instagram, but you can get it at Amazon, even your local bookseller, as well as Target and even Barnes & Noble. So type in my name. From burning your blueprint, you can make sure that you get your copy today. All right, that's it for me. Talk to you guys later. Bye.